What is going on guys? Dayton here, aka Dr. Autoflower, back with another video. It's been a little while, but we took some time off for some uh, health reasons, for mental health, and uh, sometimes it's good to do that so you're not burning yourself out. Um, so I don't want to burn myself out on this stuff. I really want to come back with some awesome content. We definitely got some interesting things coming along for content in this channel, come along in the future, so make sure you're following along for that. Make sure you smash the like button, really helps. Leave a comment in the comment section, it helps the algorithm. Let's uh, get the algorithm going. And before we get into it, I just wanted to do a little mini review. The Air Riser uh, XQ2, the new Air Riser, I've been trying this out, doing some reviews on it, and I absolutely love this thing. For a desktop uh, vape, this is probably one of the best out there, especially for the bang for your buck. Definitely, definitely love this thing. I love how it's all glass on glass, where it's easily all pops off and it's all glass. <laughs> I got this thing a little caked up already because I've been really uh, testing it out. And I absolutely love this thing. And, uh, and again, the value of this thing, the bang for your buck is pretty much unbeatable. Um, the only thing that's a little bit better would be, I guess, the Volcano. I've tried those and it's a little bit better. But this thing gives off amazing taste, amazing flavors, and vapes very nicely. So definitely gets my thumb of approval. I'm a big fan of this uh, whip uh, balloon setup. I actually like it more than the volcano setup, uh, just for the ease of use. It just seems a little bit easier to use uh, when you're taking stuff on and off. Probably went through about a half pound with this thing, so definitely got a good review out of it and uh, highly recommend. So today we're gonna get into some question and answers. We had a few sent over from uh, viewers. So let's get right into it. So Michael here asks, uh, what I struggle with I've seen is growing big dense buds on my autos like yours and a couple other growers I've watched. Any suggestions to key areas to focus on? One of the biggest things would probably be your light quality. Uh, I've grown autos with, uh, you know, pretty cheap LEDs in the past and I've grown autos with very nice quality LEDs and there is a big difference in bud quality I found. The cheapo lights I've used before in the past, uh, the buds were kind of airy, not fully developed and you could definitely tell they're missing some weight. But with the newer tech and LEDs uh, you pretty much can avoid all that give them the proper power amounts they need and they're gonna come out with awesome quality buds. So as long as you're staying away from the really cheap LEDs, you should be fine. Also be sure to measure your par and make sure you're giving the proper par amounts for your plants during that uh, part of their life cycle. If they're in flower, they need a certain amount of par so they can actually build those nice buds. And also nutrients is a big one. You don't wanna be given uh, veg nutrients and flower. If you have too much veg nutrients during flower, your plants will create uh, leafy, more airy buds. For me, given advanced nutrients, I actually use only flower nutrients for the plants, so I never actually use the veg cycle, and they can actually get through very nicely just with the uh, flower nutrients. Make sure if you're interested, go check out my uh, feeding schedule. Um, just search Dr. R Flower feeding schedule and it should pop up. So Bill asks here, do you have a schedule for light height for various stages of growth or do you rely solely on par ratings? Solely on par ratings. I never ever care about the height. The height is only, uh, I think of more as density of light or the spread of light. So like the higher you have your light up, the more it's gonna diffuse and spread out the closer you have it down, the more uh, direct and intense the light will be. So let's say if you wanted like super low heat and low power usage and you had a bigger light, you would have that light go closer down, you turn the power down and have the par at the same amount you'd want, but you'd be using less power and less heat would be coming out of those lights. And if you wanted better diffusion and uh, a better spread, uh, covering more more evenly I guess you would want it further away in the power a little bit higher up so you can keep the par level the same but you can change the light spread the heat amount that's coming off um, it, it all depends like I, I've done that before like let's say I have seedlings and I have them under a big light well I don't really want to use full power of that big light I want to turn it right down 
and get the par levels as what I want. So I can adjust the height and par level accordingly for that. And for example, like flowering, you would want it at a decent amount of height so you're getting a better spread, but then you're also making sure your par level is what you need. For me, par level is always the most important and then I worry about if I want spread or if I want it close to the plant and save some energy. So while Bill last just finished some autos and found some beans in them, uh, I didn't notice any bananas. Will they be auto flowers themselves? Um, found like six of them, not sure, new to growing. Uh, so I've done this too. I found, same with, same with regulars, I've found seeds sometimes like that, five, six in a plant. And I've also too noticed that there was no bananas or from what I've seen, no bananas. I always thought like maybe it's inside the plant, you don't see it opening up and maybe that's why it doesn't pollinate the whole plant. Maybe the banana is like enclosed in the buds and that's why it, it can't open up and spread. But as long as you're not getting pollen from a regular plant, those definitely should be autos, those seeds. And when I've noticed them, um, I've never really noticed a difference in quality of the bud. Uh, if it only produces like five or six seeds, that's usually not an issue at all. If it's a plant that's producing a ton of seeds, then I would say that's probably bad genetics and you probably wouldn't want to be growing those again um, because you're losing a lot of potency because when your plant's creating seeds, it's not creating uh, trichromes to protect the plants and you lose potency. And if you do grow some of those seeds, I would just keep an eye on those autos. Make sure you don't see any bananas coming out of them and uh, make sure they're not turning hermy. Um, I guess they would be a little bit more susceptible to going hermy if they came from a hermy plant. Because the last thing you want is a plant going full hermy, opening up a bunch of banana pods and uh, getting pollen everywhere and getting all over your plants and your, your grow space. That's not good. Muhammad asks, what are your favorite breeders for autos and what strains? Uh, pretty much what I tell beginners is you pretty much can't go wrong with Mephisto. Um, they are probably some of the best autos to grow because the quality is pretty much always there. I've always got an amazing bud off all of my plants that I've grown from them. And they're very stable and they're very well known and well respected. So that's where I'd always say to start from. Green Mountain Mobile Blasting asks, I saw you did a video on Page Perfect. Was looking at the micro grow and bloom setup. Um, he's asking about what he should be trying. I highly recommend you search the Dr. Autoflower feeding schedule on YouTube here and it'll pop up. I went through a whole feeding schedule and I do not use the grow and bloom stuff. I only use the uh, flower mix. And it's pretty simple. Tons of people have had amazing results with it, so definitely give it a try. I'll also put a link for it in the uh, comment section down below, so go check that out. JD asks, what's the fastest finishing strain you've ever grown and who was the breeder? I think my fastest one was probably 62 to 64 days, so eight weeks from seed. And that was Short Stuff Seeds Russian Rocket Fuel, I believe. Um, also one of the stickiest plants I've ever grown. <laughs> that was back in the day, I think like 2011 or 2012 or something like that. So definitely old school genetics for autoflowers, but they were pretty decent back then. And that was one of the strains that really got me into autoflowers because I was amazed by how fast it was done and <laughs> how crazy sticky it was. So Mr. Nice Guy asks here, I'll be growing outside in a greenhouse, but my roommates have a bright patio light 20 to 30 feet away uh, when it's dark, it'll be on. Will this affect my plants negatively? Uh, if you're growing autoflowers, that's the nice thing about autoflowers, you don't need to worry about uh, light leaks. They're just not affected by it. They're affected by the days that they're alive. So they don't go by light schedule, they go by how many days they're actually alive. Anthony asks, I got a Mars Hydro 4,500 light. How far do you recommend and that? What percentage should I have it set at? Uh, I really don't know. Uh, I would highly suggest you take a par reading and go from that. To me, measuring light is the same thing as measuring your nutrients. Uh, if you're just giving random amounts of nutrients, that is not good. <laughs> you should be 
knowing what you're giving your plants and giving them exactly what they need. Same with light, you should take a par reading, you should figure out what par you need for that point of your life cycle and give the plant that. Chapo asks, uh, I moved into an apartment and started a small autoflower grows and he's worried about his lighting bill. Um, but he's only using a 100 watt LED. So if you're only using a 100 watt LED, you shouldn't be worried about lighting bill at all. That's very, very minimum. Uh, your bill should only go up like a couple dollars, I would think. Um, it's pretty minimum, I would say. It's the same equivalent of using a just a regular light bulb and leaving it on uh, 18 hours a day. It's not a big amount, probably five to ten dollars estimate. Brad has a question and asking as a new grower can I do 12 and 12 light as I have six photos that need to be flipped. What do I do? I, I would say in this situation I don't know how many autos you have but you obviously need to get your photos flipped so I would say just go for it. Your plants can finish off in 12 and 12. It's not optimal but it is doable. And when you're in a certain situation like that, then you kind of just got to, um, cause I'm sure your plants are maybe getting too big and gonna overgrow your area and that can happen. Um, so sometimes you just gotta do it. You gotta flip them and uh, your autos won't be as good as they could be, but they'll, I'm sure they'll still be fine. So that's it for this little question and answer video guys. If you've got any questions for next one, put it down below in the comment section and I will get to them. Also make sure you smash that like button, leave a comment too, really helps the algorithm. I'm gonna be starting to put out some more consistent videos and uh, preparing for uh, new upcoming adventures. So stay tuned for that guys. Uh, more to come on that and until next time, peace out and we'll catch you guys later.